Hello everybody, welcome back to my rebranded channel, it's the Centralized Dave with Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi David. This is podcast time and we do weekly now and we are shorter 30 minutes. So let's start with the updates. Um, so Curtis, you usually start. So how sure. Go? Talk about Bitcoin. How we go, yeah. So yeah, we're if you go to the hourly on Bitcoin, it's maybe interesting. Okay, there we go. So you can see this channel off of the low about what five days ago or something we hit mm -hmm. the 17 600 um we got up to 21 7 on the bounce the top little peak there was 21 7 mm -hmm. and we're at 21 4 right now so if we can break above that 21 7 there could be a bit of an air pocket above that where we potentially go up to around 25 and if this fails probably we're going back down or it might grind along but I think for if get above 21.7, um, might get a small breakout higher. Um, so the stock market was good last week. We had a good Friday. And so some of the thesis I'm seeing is now that stocks are showing some strength, there might be, uh, I there might, yeah. I will that, switch. There we go. Yeah. See the, see, is that Monday, that green candle? That's the last week. Do you want daily? Well, that's weekly. Yeah. So you saw how good that week was. No, that's fine. Weekly's mm -hmm. fine. So it was a good week. Um, so assuming that continues uh, the next couple of days, some of that money, now that it's been profitable in stocks, might go over to Bitcoin and pump Bitcoin on a very short term basis. Um, our thesis continues that uh, stocks are correlated to Bitcoin. Um, until that changes, we just should assume that that's going to happen. So rallying stocks might trickle over to rallying Bitcoin. And that would take us to maybe 25 to 28,000 on Bitcoin. That, that is a lot of resistance at 28,000. So that would probably be the highest it would go. And um, yeah, not financial advice, but a lot of people will probably sell that. 25 to 28 and expect that we go back down and test again. So that's what's happening. Um, uh, Curtis has beautifully covered the price action for the past week. Um, let's have a look at the leverage because I always derive like facts from there. And when I try to assess the situation, so this is my favorite over leveraging indicator. And the last week, actually, I was looking at this and I was like, this is actually really good because there was leverage leaving like ever since uh, the past 10 days we've bought some well we visited 17.6k on 18th of june ever since that time the leveraging was going down there was leverage <laughs> being closed that was very good and people were actually the negative funding look at these beautiful red lines down so this this is aggregate funding but over the past three days there was like there might be some new leverage coming back you know back up so actually i don't think this is uh, at the moment i think overall the chances really improved that this was some kind of local bottom that we had last week also that's how we finished last podcast that the next right. week we will know we will be clear and i think we are clear and i'm going to show you another proofs that yes this was something for for now Although yeah. at the moment, from the over leveraging, it looks to me that there is higher chance that we are uh, just as Curtis mentioned, we are going back down now. I don't think this is going to be now breakout to 23 point plus, like 23 at max right now. I think we're going to we're going to have to go down because again, again, the buy and the dip again, the long and again, again, the same mentality. I think it's way too early for that, I think. And also it's not enough for a short squeeze at the moment. But if you continue like the past 10 days, uh, then there might be some leverage to, to short squeeze, but not, not at the moment. This is total cryptocurrency market cap. Okay. So this is the total, like the, we are at 900, 944 billion at the moment. And it was the very top from uh, January, 2018. Okay. So on trading view, January 2018, the top was 761 billion. Wow. And the bot Perfect. last week was 762 billion. 
Wow. So yet again, this, uh, and also at the moment we are in the cluster from January, 2021. So, and we've already are passed, I mean, we broke this, this level, there was supposed to be tons of liquidity at 1.3 billion. And we just broke it down. There was no reaction. It was at the, mm. in the mid May. So we are already passed to have some kind of reaction. And now in the second level, so, um, yeah um so yeah i thought this touch was pretty interesting and um in my opinion chances are high that this is some kind of local bottom but if there is going to be if people start to be wild again no promises guys if you will see again overwhelming by the dip and stuff like that and cycles again then no promises i'm telling you in that case we will even break this level without reaction that's not impossible at all and that's why you should be always open-minded every time not try to do like too long predictions and just look at what's happening at the moment and react in my opinion right so if that's a local bottom then don't you think we go to 25 to 28 in the short term if we've bottomed well again if there is wild by the deep philosophy and i see long leverage coming then i'm gonna say that no we won't go there but uh, I don't think I mean, it's not far, right? It's only like another small, what, another 15% to go to 25, 10%. Yeah, I do not think we will go the next week to above 23, not at all. I do not. What think if stocks that. rally? I'm just playing devil's advocate here. But what if stocks mm -hmm. have a really Monday, Tuesday have a really good week? Don't you think that that would affect Bitcoin? It would affect, but it would not make it go past 23. I disagree with this this week, at least. A thousand dollars, only a thousand. So you, uh, that's only well, a five. it looks like it's just within the reach, right? But sometimes things look like it's just within the reach, but the reach never yeah. happens. So and I'm a little bit more bullish in the very, very short term. I think if stocks, like. well, especially the condition would be stocks do have a good week, but um, uh, there's a lot of, there's a good chance of a, a bear market rally in stocks because we had, remember, we had what, nine weeks of Bitcoin selling off? So yeah, pretty much. it is kind of due for a technical recovery, right? There, there uh, at least a 50% chance we go to the 25 to 28 range, I would say, but if I'm, I not, had to I'm guess, not a day trader. I don't know. If I had to guess, I'm not a day trader either. If I'm, if I had to guess or speculate, then the next podcast, we will be lower than we are right now, by the way, if I had to speculate. So let's see. Right. Very last chart that we want to look before we move forward is the Bitcoin dominance because we are continuing making history, guys. Because this is, I think, the really first time in a history where crypto kind of crashed, where we had a pretty major sell off and Bitcoin dominance went down a lot. Every time in the past, ever when there was a crash, there was, you know, panic. And in panic, people always sold the altcoins harder. This is the first time in history where Bitcoin was sold harder generally than the altcoins. And you're saying it's not because of people going to stable coins. Let's check past 30 days. Tether went only down. Tether only went down. Now let's have a look at USDC. That might be a different picture. USDC, that's you are right. USDC went up over the past month. Not for, a lot though, just a couple billion. Yeah, for about 3 billion. It look, looks like the Tether the, the tether market cap is coming to USDC market cap. That's right, what I that can see. Sense. Yes. But so which I coins are taking this market cap? Is it all the altcoins are taking dominance or? I don't know which specifically uh, yeah. was gaining dominance, but it's just that Bitcoin dominance was going down. I thought that's right. interesting. And now let's let's dive into your subject, into your topic. Sure. Yeah, your famous pie chart. So oh, yeah, I'm going to, if someone gets tired of this chart, they can <laughs> tell me to stop. Uh, but if not, I'm going to keep going with it because I think it's just a, a, a good, um, I guess it's my big thesis. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and stick on this for the next, who knows, might be a year or two. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie, The Big Short, right? The Michael Burry story about mm -hmm. the, the big short we all have, have you seen that movie <laughs> yes many times yeah so i don't know if this is would be the big long this is the inverse of that this would be 
a call option. So, so the big short was a, a put option on collateralized mortgages, right? Mm -hmm. He basically shorted yep. uh, collateralized yes. loans and derivatives, right? Yes. So if that's a put option, this would be a call option and it wouldn't be against mortgages, it would be against fiat currency or legacy assets. So um, the big long would be my my catchy phrase for it, but it's basically saying that um, these other assets are gonna break down in high inflation and Bitcoin and as a corollary um, crypto would get a, a major bid. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about bonds today. So you can see there's there's real estate at 300 trillion, bonds 128 trillion, equities, cash. But I thought I would just drill down a little bit on bonds. So let's talk about the bond market. Um, there isn't, people have been talking about Bitcoin replacing gold or challenging gold. Um, there's also an argument that Bitcoin will challenge bonds as a um, sort of risk-free um, cash equivalent option uh, in the future. It's not there yet. Bitcoin is still extremely risky, but we're talking about in the next couple of years or in, in a hypothetical future that might come that Bitcoin starts becoming a stable, conservative part of people's um, portfolios because it doesn't have a cash flow and it's a provable fixed supply. Um, so anyways, let's go look at bonds. So if you go to my next slide mm -hmm. that I, I shared with you, yeah. it describes, this is a breakdown. Um, we'll share a, a link to this page in the, in the notes, but it breaks down the 130 trillion by country. So you can see here um, on the far right is uh, it's in billions. So uh, if you see 40 million billions, that's 40 trillion, right? Okay. Does that make sense? So when it says 40, it's uh -huh. 40 trillion. So the USA has 40 trillion of bonds, uh, China, 15 trillion, Japan, 10 trillion, France, 4 trillion, on and on and on. So it breaks it down by country, which is maybe interesting. Um, so out of the 130 trillion, uh, USA has about, let's say a third of that. Um, China, maybe a sixth. Japan has about uh, 8%, et cetera. Now, why is this interesting? Because uh, people will talk about US treasuries and um, they are the most, um, val uh, they're the safest, right? But there's many countries here issuing very large amounts of what we'd call sovereign bonds. Uh, that are far more risky and are suffering from greater inflation than even in the US. So if you look at India or maybe some of the, the ones further down, Brazil, look at Brazil mm -hmm. at the bottom. Brazil has $763 billion in 10-year tre treasuries, and yet the Brazilian inflation rate is extremely high. So if you talk about risky bonds versus a, a hypothetical future Bitcoin bond or Bitcoin um, holding, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing, you're comparing, not only are you saying, uh, well, you're saying that especially these sovereign bonds could become very unattractive in comparison to a Bitcoin investment. So that's what I'm showing here. Um, the next is you could go to, there's a website actually. So this page here, um, again, we'll share it in, in, the, in the video notes, but you can sure. see the yield. So these are the countries 10-year bond yields if you go down to japan right mm -hmm. so if you put your scroll your, your cursor over japan so japan 10-year yields if you go to the, yeah are 0.22 percent that's not a typo right it's less than one it's almost zero wow okay for 10-year fixed treasuries okay who would want to buy that um now go down further okay go to germany 1.4%. That's still not very good, is it? I mean, go to the US, it's 3.13, right? Mm -hmm. Not great, but better than the other ones. I mean, look at some of the really bad ones. Um, yeah, so Poland, 7%, 8%. Um, this is the country where I'm at, 2.46. Go to Russia. What are they paying? 8%. 8 okay. But they have very high inflation rates. So uh, the story nice. here is why I included that. So. The, again, the thesis follows logically. Bonds are 130 trillion. Bitcoin's only half a trillion. 
Uh, bonds are issued by not only the U.S. government, but many sovereign, well, every sovereign nation issues bonds. Many of them offer very bad rates and have very risky economies, right? Mm -hmm. um, putting those together, you're seeing a, a very uh, unattractive global bond market. They're not even keeping up with inflation rates, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're locking in um, a U.S. 10-year treasury at 3%, but you've got 8% real inflation, right? So you're losing 5% a year. <laughs> so, and that's probably the best case scenario you could come up with. So, so that's what I was doing with these charts and just the argument of sort of drilling down and looking at what, uh, you know, Bitcoin crypto might be competing with in the future. Mm -hmm. and, and they're fairly easy competition, in my opinion. I would like to look back on my uh, Luxo call from the end of March. So Luxo is a small layer one, which is in development. Uh, it's not on mainnet even, so the token is only as ERC20 today, but there is going to be that token fairly soon. And I made a call like at the end of March. I made a video uh, a couple of days ago talking about Ethereum contract, uh, Luxo on Ethereum contract, and I am uh, bullish on this chart. But what I can be wrong is a time frame because what actually can be happening that this chart is quite bearish on the daily frame, daily time frame, but on weekly, I believe it's still gonna be bullish. There are levels that I have drawn these yellow lines uh, for you because I think they work. I think this chart respects them. So what I told you in the video, what I told you that this level is going to happen before this level. Uh, right. And I meant it on daily and that's actually where I can be wrong. So I want to talk about the alternative in case I'm wrong here. Uh, the bearish alternative is that we actually now uh, reverse somewhere in this cluster. I don't think we are going to straight to this level though. Right. I can be wrong given that, but I think that there can be, there can be some kind of a reaction, then this level then reaction and then mm -hmm. break out all the way to the 0 0.002 level. But right. still on weekly, I am still bullish. Uh, even if we come back, even if we somehow now through some sideways, even if we come back to this level, uh, 0 0.02, where we were right. last summer, I think that this chart is still bullish because it went up so much parabolic here. That's a long consolidation afterwards. I think it's it's completely excusable. I would still say, even if this happens, that this chart is still bullish, and I would still be uh, seeing it as the the point of reversal, then, and maybe another parabolic run, because these parabolic runs on this contract, as you can see, they are not impossible. So we actually really went down on the Ethereum contract all the way to the FAT line, and we did not even close on it, and we are bouncing, and now we retested two levels ahead. Or right. higher okay. and it looks like it might even redo it back but i think it's safe to say that this level can actually hold so sum up i think it uh, laxo is uh macro still bullish even though the the april and half of may were disasters even all may actually was such a disaster right. for laxo performance, right. price performance where can you buy the coin which exchanges uh KuCoin, Gate, and Uniswap. And what is maybe your audience would like to, for those of them that aren't familiar, maybe they would like to hear one or two things about the project? It's the third generation layer one. So it's perhaps not the, uh, uh, not what we call the fifth generation. It's still a blockchain because fifth generation smart contract platforms are no longer a blockchain. They're DAGs or forms of DAGs or something in between or some things like that. Luxo is still a blockchain, although it's being developed, created by one of the Ethereum guys, Fabian Vogelsteller, who created ERC20 token back in the Ethereum days. And he's moved to his own project like in 2018 or so, and he's been working on it ever since. And he uh, is implementing pretty interesting new identity standards into Luxo. Like it's all about uh, identity uh, on blockchain, identity 
of, pe of people, but also of the items, like fashion items, collectibles, as well physical collectibles. Uh, the identity being given through passive chips and stuff like that. That is pretty interesting, quite a few ideas that are in the project. And I, I would say that this is interesting layer one. So the next, uh, the next podcast we're going to be doing on Sundays. We're moving to Sundays for now. Well, usually recently it's easy to find topics because the market is so volatile. So I'm sure the, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, I mean, the big news would be, does the stock market continue to rally? That's enorm an enormous um, event if it does, right? Because it would show that the, in the very short term, we've, the selling has stopped. I think that will knock on into a, a short a short crypto bounce, maybe 10%, who knows, 10, 20%. Um, just that the correlation will keep up. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that'll, yeah, so that'll give us more things to talk about. Um, we're still, so we're a couple weeks off the monthly print for, so we had the May inflation. Next, we're looking for June, right? So it's in a couple oh. weeks. So June, okay. uh, but that's maybe 10 days off. So, okay, so two podcasts away. Maybe next inflation. Also, you've mentioned yeah. that there's gonna be a bad numbers like uh, like Tesla and you know, like, and that's yeah. going to be at the beginning of July? Uh, probably like around the 10th. So yeah, the quarter two, right? So quarter two mm -hmm. is April, May, June, right? So in July, beginning of July, early July, we're gonna get the quarter two results, earnings results for all stocks, everyone in the stock market. And so obviously if that's good, if, if the earnings are good, uh, stocks will rally. If earnings are bad, it's gonna indicate it'll be very bad because it's it'll be saying maybe we're going into a recession. Um, with Tesla in particular, um, Elon Musk has made little comments that they're having a bad Q2. Um, I expect that the legacy news will overemphasize this and they'll say things like uh, Tesla's going bankrupt, all this nonsense. Volkswagen is the new EV provider, all just complete garbage. But I think they'll have, um, if the Q2 is bad for Tesla, let's say Tesla was losing some money in Q2. Um, the legacy financial news will attack them and people will try to short the stock. So it may have a very short uh, period of time where it drops. Um, so watch for that. I would say buy that. But <laughs> if you know advice. that the, the report is going to be bad, it means the market knows as well. So it means it should be priced in? Uh, well, yes. But the thing is, your average retail investor doesn't pay attention that closely. Fair enough. And okay. they go off of... Um, Bloomberg and uh, CNBC uh, headlines, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so they know it's bad, but how that gets interpreted is different, right? So I, I think last week there was someone said by 2025, Volkswagen is going to be the top EV producer in the world. This is such nonsense. It's unbelievable. Like, I don't think Volkswagen has sold more than 100,000 cars. <laughs> so it's ridiculous. Anyways, they, there's some, re for some reason, the legacy financial news hate Tesla. Um, obviously, they own a lot of Ford and GM shares, but um, obviously. So, so they will overplay it, is what I'm saying. They'll try to scare people again, and there are a lot of shorts in the market, including people like Bill Gates. So, um, yeah, I expect there might be an attack on Tesla a little bit, and then Q3 will be better and, and it'll rally again. So. Um, so shorting in the market is perhaps a very interesting topic we should and we could cover the next podcast. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. See you again.